introduce themselves for about a minute. Uh, then they will have two questions to answer. And then we'll look to the audience to see if there's uh, a question or two that we can, uh, that you would like to ask the candidates that uh, uh, we can uh, pose to them. And then we'll ask the candidates to provide closing remarks before moving on to the next uh, council race. Um, we uh, also have an opportunity for council uh, candidates to supply fuller written uh, answers to a lot of energy questions, some, six of them that we ask that you can find on the FNO website at fnoefno.org. Um, and the, the deadline for those uh, responses candidates is tomorrow. So please get your answers in and we'll share those with everyone uh, on, via the FNO website. Uh, this meeting and candidate form is being recorded. The recording of the video will be provided on the FNO website, and, and it's also being live cast as well. So um, we're uh, happy that technology can bring us all together, and uh, we'll have a recording of this going forward. So with that in mind, I want to introduce uh, FNO members who will be part of managing this forum. We have Ms. Dawn Bear, New Orleans East Advocate. Uh, Ms. Uh, Nichelle uh, Turner with uh, Greater New Orleans Housing Alliance. Um, Robert Desmaris will be also asking questions. Ms. Kenitra Caston Hill with the Alliance for Affordable Energy. And I don't, I think that's it. I don't think I've left anyone out. Uh, and then of course, Ms. Logan Burke, who can forget. Ms. Logan Burke with the Alliance for Affordable Energy will also be asking questions. Our timekeeper is Mr. Jesse George with the Alliance for Affordable Energy. And our moderator uh, will be uh, Sophie Zakin with the Alliance for Affordable Energy. So she'll be um, looking through the chat for questions you might have the uh, candidates, putting those together so that we can pose those to the candidates when their time comes. Okay. So with that being said, we have, I think, just one candidate from District E, Mr. Bob Merle, who's here with us. Bob, can you begin with a one minute introduction of yourself? And from there, you'll hear from Michelle, who will ask questions of you. Thank you. Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, great. Thank you all so much. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Uh, my name is Bob Morell. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm running for city council to put people first. Uh, a little bit about me. I was born at Charity Hospital. I've been a member of the working class my entire life. Uh, I've been selling my labor since I was 15 years old. Uh, my first job was actually as a janitor, and now over 20 years later, I'm a senior software developer who leads projects across a variety of industries. I'm also a dad, a cyclist, a uh, comedian and an actor, uh, but most importantly, I'm a human being who lives in this city on the front lines of the climate crisis. I understand the urgency that our government needs to have to make sure our city is habitable for generations to come. And I'm the only candidate in this race that prioritizes the environment on their platform and how it impacts the cost of living and public health. Uh, I believe together we can make New Orleans a truly resilient city in the face of the climate crisis, put an end to the housing crisis, and most of all, to put people first. Thank you. Thank you. And Bob, is it possible to turn your video on? Uh, I don't have that option. Right. Michelle, want to take it from here? Yep. Thank you, Monique. Um, okay, Bob, so what do you think is the biggest energy problem facing New Orleans residents and how would you work to solve it if elected to serve on the city council? Thank you so much. Uh, so I think there's a couple of different issues uh, with, with energy for our uh, people in New Orleans. First and foremost is the ability to make sure that we stay cool, right? Uh, the extreme heat events that have been occurring recently are only gonna get worse as we move forward. So we need to have a reliable energy grid that can handle the amount of air conditioning that we're gonna have to run in all these aged houses, right? Uh, but also it, it means making sure that our, our neighborhoods are cooler by reducing the heat map and uh, reintroducing the tens of thousands of trees that we lost after Katrina. Uh, the second fold issue is, in my opinion, the, the distribution and retention of uh, solar energy. Uh, I, I think we're really losing so much untold amounts of energy that could be using, like I said, to keep our houses cooled and our lights on uh, and our refrigerators keeping our drinks cold. Uh, and 
the fact that we have so many limitations upon solar collection and retention, uh, not just in New Orleans, but Louisiana as whole is, is, a, is a big problem. And so we need to try to reduce those barriers so that way people are not only incentivized, but provided equitable access to getting um, you know, the ability to try to cool their houses and power their houses when we can't rely upon energy to give us reliable transmission, even in fair weather. Thank you. Um, and then question number two, just before Hurricane Ida, Entergy collected 30 million from New Orleans customers as the first year installment payment for building the, ga the gas plant next to in New Orleans East. For the next 29 years, Entergy plans to collect more money from us that will total to $650 million for a gas plant that did not work in Hurricane Ida as Entergy claimed it would. If elected to serve in the city council, would you support a thorough examination of the gas plant costs to prevent unreasonable fees and charges and ensure that residents can fully participate? Yes, I absolutely support that measure. Um, you know, I, I was pretty critical. Obviously, I wasn't on city council at the time, but uh, very critical of the plant. And especially when you look at how Entergy responded to the criticisms of that by paying actors. Some of these actors I've actually worked with in local theater and comedy scene. So to me, the bigger joke is the fact that Entergy continues to lie to us about what their capabilities are, how much things are gonna cost, and the fact that they claim they can't handle the financial burden and they'll pass it on to rate users when in actuality, they're having record profits during the middle of a pandemic. So for me, I would certainly uh, be in favor of a very thorough investigation and make sure that you know everyday citizens of New Orleans are not the ones that are having to shoulder the burden for corporate greed from Entergy. Thank you, Bob. Next, thank you, and Michelle and Bob. Uh, next, we'll hear from uh, candidates in District B. Uh, that will be asked by Logan. Um, just before she asks the question, I just want to um, make sure we have every, the candidates from District B present. Sorry, Monique, I believe this is the time for the Q&A. Very good, thank you, Sophie. Let's go with the Q&A. All right, um, we, have, we have a couple of questions, um, some easy answers. Um, in 10 seconds, uh, Bob, will you participate in the IRP, the integrated resource planning process? Yes. Wonderful. Second question. If elected to serve on the city council, would you support a thorough examination of the gas plant costs to prevent unreasonable fees and charges and ensure that residents can fully participate? You know it. That's then, a yes. <laughs> all right. And we have one other person that said the power plant in New Orleans East was a bad idea. How do you respond to this? I agree. Absolutely. I think the cost of natural gas is going to cont continue to increase and it, it's exacerbating the climate crisis by dumping untold amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere. So yeah, I think it's a terrible idea. I don't support it now and didn't in the beginning. Thank you so much. Um, you now have one minute for any closing comments. Thank you so much. You know, a lot of people ask me why I decided to run for city council. And quite honestly, I didn't until last year when I emailed council member Jeruso, who's the chair of the environmental committee about supporting a resolution to advocate for Green New Deal. Now he wrote back to me that he'd rather quote, focus on legislation that can change lives. And that's when I realized I needed to be the change that I wanted to see on city council. We need an economy and a government that prioritizes people over profits. Whether we're talking about your energy bill, COVID restrictions, short-term rentals, or even your garbage. And unlike my opponent, I refuse money from oil and gas, real estate developers, and city contractors because I'm not beholden to money interest, I'm beholden to you, the people. I think there's a clear choice for progress in District A, and that's number 39 on the ballot. My name is Bob Morell, and you can visit my website at bob, the number four, districtday.com for more information or to get involved. Stay safe. Thank you, Bob. Um, I think we're now ready to move on to District B at this point. I see 
Uh, Councilmember Jay Banks has joined us. Thank you, Councilmember. I see Ms. Leslie Harris is here is joining us. Thank you, Ms. Harris. Um, is there are there any other candidates um, we were expecting from District B? It does not appear that other candidates for District B uh, are in the attendee or panelist lineup. Okay, well, let's go forward with the candidates we have. Thank you, uh, thank you again for uh, being uh, attending this uh, candidate forum by the Energy Future New Orleans. Um, beginning with um, Council Member, uh, excuse me, uh, Council Member Jay Banks, can you please tell us what you see is, uh, if you can introduce yourself and then they'll be followed by um, candidate uh, Ms. Harris and you each have one minute. Thank you. Well, good evening and thank you for the opportunity. Now I'm, I'm apparently having difficulty. I'm trying to be on the phone because it's not coming through on the on the Zoom. I don't have any sound. Can you all hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, we can. Well, again, thank you all for the opportunity. I appreciate the, um, the, the chance to exchange dialogue. I am Jay Banks. I'm the councilman from District D. And I am running for re-election. And I would hope to have a fruitful dialogue because affordable energy is critical to the success of all of our citizens. And I'm holistically committed to doing all I can to get that done. Thank you. Harris. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Afno. My name is Leslie Harris. I'm number 41 on the ballot. I've been a leader in the business community. I've worked for large companies, small companies, entrepreneurs, and culture bears. I led the university. I led Loyola University as chief of staff, taking a financially failing university and writing the ship. It was like running a small city with its own power operations. And I also led the university's disaster management through hurricane planning and COVID response. I decided to run for District B because I see my neighbors and friends suffering. We have powder out, power outages all the time, large energy bills that we can't afford to pay, oil water advisories and outages. New Orleans has become very hard to live in and Hurricane Ida further showed just how weak and outdated our systems are. And I think we need to get back to the basics. Those basics include ensuring a solid and reliable infrastructure, we have to demand our utility companies provide the services that they are supposed to on time and without outages and at a cost that's reasonable to consumers. We must demand that our fees go where they're supposed to. I have the legal background and administrative policy making experience to get things done. I will not shy away from challenges or bullies. Instead, I will build consensus and solve problems. I'm not about backroom deals. I have never worked for Entergy. I will work for the people as your next council person in District B. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you. Um, uh, our next question, and this will be the same for each of the candidates uh, across each district. And again, we'll begin with uh, Council Member Banks. Um, this first question is, what do you think is the biggest energy problem facing New Orleans residents? And how will you work to solve it if elected to serve on the council? Council Member Banks, if you'd like to go first. He's right now he's muted. Can you yeah. unmute your phone, Council Member Banks? Sorry, guys, this technology stuff isn't working the way it's supposed to. Um, yes, I, I think the biggest problem for all of our citizens is the economics in this city. And we have to be intentional in making sure that we level the playing field in as many ways as possible. Now, having a reliable utility system is critical and having one that citizens can pay for is critical. I have been steadfast in my review of all of, of the energy legislation that has come before me, and I will continue to do that. Now, I know that many people may disagree with the path, but please know that I'm working towards the same end as everybody on this call, I'm sure, to make sure that we have safe, reliable, affordable energy for all of our citizens. Thank you. Um, Ms. Harris, again, what do you think is the biggest energy problem facing New Orleans residents and how will you work to solve it if elected to serve on council? 
I think it was clear from Hurricane Ida that there's a lack of clean and renewable energy resources here in New Orleans. Um, we saw our restaurants who tried to feed everybody after Hurricane Ida try to pull together, um, but food was rotting. I was out there dishing it and cooking it. Food was rotting because there was no solar or batteries to run the solar power. Um, so I think we need to focus on getting microgrids together. Um, we need to focus on providing solar alternatives to not only businesses, but homeowners and renters. And we need to get energy if they're going to remain our our monopolistic utility to invest in solar and clean energy. And that includes uh, educating people about these alternatives and meeting people where they are. So actually coming into the neighborhoods and talking about these alternatives. We also need to work with the federal government in order to increase tax incentives um, for homeowners, uh, for people who own rental properties, for businesses so that they can get solar installed in their homes and businesses. There's some weird feedback. Um, so definitely, I think we need to focus on clean and renewable energy sources. Um, we need to harden this grid. I live right on Barone Street, and you can see um, rusted out transformers that are lying on the ground that came down after, um, after the storm. So obviously, there has not been adequate maintenance to the system, um, and we definitely need to look into why uh, why it failed, the system failed after Hurricane Ada, and what we can do to prevent this in the future. Thank you. Thank you. Um, our second question, 24% uh, of New Orleans residents live in poverty, just twice the national average. The unemployment rate in, in New Orleans is also twice as, twice as high as the national rate. If elected to city council, how could you use energy policy to address poverty and unemployment in New Orleans? Um, candidate Banks? By training people in the new energy facilitation activities, we have a tremendous opportunity to make New Orleans a model for the world. I think that we ought to be looking at not just solar, we ought to be looking at wind, we ought to be looking at water, we ought to be looking at as many ways possible to diversify the dependence on fossil fuel. I'm committed to that. I think that that will create a tremendous amount of jobs and utilizing that whole sector out of our people to work. Thank you. Um, Ms. Harris, again to you. If elected to the city council, how would you use energy policy to address poverty and unemployment in New Orleans? So as you noted in the questionnaire, and as I know, um, 20, many people are paying 28% of their income on energy bills. And we as city council people have the ability to set rates um, and to require um, discounts for those who are not in need. I, again, I have neighbors all around me who are unable to afford basic energy costs and are scared to default on them because they're taking care of elderly people. Um, they're taking care of their grandchildren. They are worried that they can't afford to eat because they have to pay energy. So I think as the council person who regulates energy and sets the rates, we have to understand our population in New Orleans and that 24% of people live in poverty and cannot afford their energy bills. We have to go hat in hand to the federal government to see if there's any supplementation that they can do to assist people in poverty with their energy bills. I know that there are programs out there, but we've seen how they work. Um, people fall behind on their energy bills and all of a sudden they're required to catch up. There's no real forgiveness of those bills. And so we really have to work with our constituents and understand their needs in order to address the high cost of energy um, and energy in New Orleans. Um, I do think that there are some workforce programs that we can do to train folks um, to make sure that there are pipelines into, again, if it's Entergy, the monopolistic um, power provider, uh, to train people to make sure that they are trained in, as technicians to get those pipelines going, because I don't think any pipelines truly exist to get people out of poverty and working for this company. Um, and again, I think we need to focus on other clean alternatives in order um, to reduce the cost of energy and so people can afford their bills. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, Sophie, I'm gonna turn it to you for any questions, to read any questions from the audience. Yes, thank you. Um, the first question is, if elected, would you support intervener funding for our public advocates? Uh, and I'll turn that over to Council Member Jay Banks first. Uh, 
obviously the scales need to be level. So I certainly would not be opposed to having uh, another perspective as a part of the discussion and to fund that. I have been a staunch advocate of the scales in the justice system. I think that the public defenders ought to be funded at the same levels of the DA. And I think that these opposing sides on all of these public issues ought to have equal representation so that you can hear both sides and both sides are equipped to be able to make them to the public. Thank you, council member. Leslie Harris, please. Yes. Same question, if elected, would you support intervener funding for our public advocates? And the answer is yes. I think um, the playing field has been unlevel for too long. Um, Entergy is paying paid consultants to lobby our council people. Um, people on the council have conflicts of interest. And so the playing field is not level in advocating for uh, the people of New Orleans. And I'm sorry, we cannot hear the timer. So just so y'all know. <laughs> yes, uh, Jesse is, is working on that. Um, one more question for candidates. Um, Will you actively participate in the IRP process? And if you have not so far, why not? And again, Council Member Banks, you can begin. You do have to unmute yourself. And, and in order to, to not have the reverb, you just have to lower your volume on your other electronic device. And again, guys, I do, I do apologize. Um, the truth is that having as many players sitting at the table trying to get an effective energy policy, I think is a valid and legitimate thing. And I will support all the efforts. I have supported all the efforts. I have not disparaged anybody with coming to talk about opposing views as it relates to utility regulations. And I'm, I am continuing to do that because no matter what and no matter how, at the end of the day, I think the motive is for all of us to get to a safe, reliable, affordable system that we may sometimes disagree on paths, but at the end of the day, I think we're all trying to get to the same place. All right, thank you, council member. Leslie Harris, um, will you actively participate in the IRP process? And if you have not so far, why not? I will actively participate in the IRP process. I have not yet. I've been focused obviously on campaigning and winning the seat for city council, but as soon as I win, I will participate. Thank you both. Uh, we now have time for closing remarks. I will let uh, Ms. Harris start just to even up the distribution a little bit. Thank you. Um, and again, thank you for inviting me to this forum. I'm sorry about the technical difficulties, um, but we are obviously facing an imminent crisis in global warming and dwindling energy resources. And we have to learn from the mistakes of Katrina and of Ada, not just the failures of Entergy, but the failures of the current council person who failed to ask, to ask the tough questions, to think ahead and to advocate for the people who need and want clean alternative energy sources. Um, we can't have advocacy for the people by someone who's conflicted out by work with and payments from the very companies he's supposed to regulate. Um, if you like how things are going in District B, backroom deals that lead to intermittent powder outages, rusted electrical distribution lines, and lack of advocacy, um, then you should absolutely vote for the incumbent. But I will push Entergy to provide cost-effective, healthy means of delivering energy, and I will listen to the constituents, renters, homeowners, and businesses who want solar power and clean energy. Um, I'll work with the federal government to get alternatives, and I hope that you will read my energy platform on my website, Harris. Cornola.com. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ms. Harris. Yes, Councilmember Banks. Thank you all. Um, my opponent is very adept at twisting facts. The truth of the matter is, yes, I did work for Entergy, but I also worked for the city council. I have been uh, a advocate for the people of this city having affordable, reliable energy my entire career. So Leslie can say whatever she chooses, but she can't distort the facts. Now she's entitled to her own opinion, but not her own facts. The truth of the matter is I have stood up. I will continue to stand up because no matter game, what the path is, I think we're all trying to get to the same place. I'm proud of the fact that I embrace and understand the need for renewables. I am the only councilman to ever require in a zoning docket that electric charging stations be added to a zoning docket. 
I'm the only councilman ever required that a grass, a, a green roof be put on top of a new facility. So the truth of this matter is I get it. My record is clear. And again, you all may disagree with me on some issues, but please, I am going to continue to fight for all of the citizens of this city. I am born and raised here. My family's here. And I know the pressure that people feel. I'm and it's your time. Thank you. Lawyer. I didn't fly in here because it was cheap land to take. Okay. All right. Um, let's see. We are moving on. Thank you. Thank you to, to our District B candidates. Um, we're moving on to, let's see, at large. Um, which at large candidates do we have? I, I understand we had. Um, Logan, kind of they're all present. I'm seeing uh, Bart Everson, who's here from the very beginning. Um, Kenneth Cutno, who was also here from the very beginning, and JP Morell uh, has come in. So welcome to all of you to the Energy Future New Orleans Candidate Forum. Um, what we're going to uh, remember, you have one minute for the questions that will be asked of you by Ms. Kenitra Caston Hill. And before she begins the questions, we just would like you to take a minute, and, and it's really exactly a minute, to introduce yourselves. Uh, let's start with uh, Mr. Kenneth Cutno, followed by Bart Everson, and then uh, J.P. Morell. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. Uh, as she stated, my name is Kenneth Cutno. I was born and raised in New Orleans. I'm a graduate of Southern University with a degree in political science and criminal law as a minor. Uh, I also uh, attended the LSU Law Enforcement Academy, and, and my background has been in housing, uh, 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 juvenile probation, uh, transportation, uh, all the issues that we are facing today. And I believe that we need a council member with the qualification and experience to address those issues. Uh, one thing I would like to let everybody know that I was in charge of putting together a $366 million river garden housing development. And when, when one of the number one things we did with that development was make sure that we put all of the en energy lines underground. And when Hurricane Katrina hit, that was one of the first development back up and running because we see we had the vision to uh, take out, to put our energy mm -hmm. lines under the ground. Oh, my time is up. <laughs> Let's go uh, to Mr. Everson. One minute, please introduce yourself. <laughs> Yes, thank you very much. My name is Bart Everson. I'm a concerned citizen, and I got in this race specifically because I'm concerned about the climate crisis, which I think uh, probably on this uh, in this forum more than more than many uh, people understand that that is a, a threat to New Orleans, an, an existential threat. We know that we've passed numerous irreversible tipping points. And that we are locked in to some extent for a, uh, to a hotter future. And that New Orleans is one of the most vulnerable cities in the world to climate change. However, uh, scientists do tell us that if we take bold action now, we can limit the damage. And that's absolutely what we have to do. It has to be at the forefront of all our policy discussions and decisions at every level, including the city council. Uh, first and foremost, by confronting energy issues. So I have great respect for the work of Energy Future New Orleans. I've learned so much from y'all and I'm honored to be here tonight. Thank you, Mr. Everson. Mr. Morrell. Uh, thank you so much for the opportunity here to speak here tonight. My name is JP Morrell. I'm a former state senator and I'm a candidate for a city council at large. In my role as a state senator, I held two very important chairmanships. The first was I was the chair of the Revenue and Fiscal Affairs Committee that oversaw tax credits. In that regards, I fought diligently and continually to repair and recreate the Louisiana solar tax credit. And I cast a very critical eye on some of the incentives that go to those non-renewable uh, fields, such as the horizontal well drilling tax credit, which is a complete waste of taxpayer money and a giveaway to large corporations. Also, I chaired the Environmental Quality Committee for several years before I was taken off it, because in my time there, we were one of the most activist committees in the legislature. We actually traveled to New Iberia during the salt dome collapse crisis 
And after having very hard conversations down there with the AGL operator and bringing a critical eye, uh, the Senate quickly removed me off environmental quality and stuck me somewhere else. So I'm here in here for the long haul. I agree with everything Bart said, because Bart's been very consistent and he's on top of it. But we are uh, a city under siege. Dimitri, you want to take it away? Sure. Thank you so much, um, gentlemen, for providing your intros. Um, my first question to you is, what do you think is the biggest energy problem facing New Orleans residents? And how would you work to solve it if elected to serve on the city council? And we'll stick with the same format. We'll start with you, Mr. Cutno, one minute, and then Mr. Everson, and then Mr. Morrell. Thank you. Well, the first problem is that we need council members that are going to represent the people of this city and not big corporations. As you all stated earlier, we are the only city council that regulates our energy corporations. And we need council members that are going to do that and not be in bed with them. Secondly, uh, uh, we need to look at competition and bring in other energy companies uh, uh, to help uh, keep our rates lower. As I walk throughout the community, I talk to many elderly people who are living on fixed incomes. And the number two issue they are talking about is their high utility rate and their high sewage and water bill rate. Uh, we have $388 million from the American Rescue Rescue uh, Plan, and we need to take those funds and put it in the, and make an investment to the people so that we can lower the energy rate, lower the sewage and water bill rate. We could buy, we could take $50 million None. and buy smart. <clears throat> Mr. Everson? Thank you. I think the biggest energy issue for New Orleans is one that a lot of citizens probably don't think about a lot. And that's the fact that uh, our energy is not all renewable and clean. In other words, it's dirty energy that contributes to global warming. And as mentioned earlier, the, the warming of the planet is going to destroy this city. Uh, the long term viability of New Orleans is what's at stake. So we have to, you know, we don't have to reinvent the wheel, but uh, we do have some programs across the city right now, such as Energy Smart. And we do have, the city council has gotten the energy to adopt the renewable and clean portfolio standard, which is a great step in the right direction, but energy is dragging its feet. So we need a council that will set aggressive, specific guideposts and timelines to accelerate that path to clean energy. And then we need to work with everybody, neighborhood associations, um, community groups, etc. Mr. Morrell? Simply put, the greatest challenge to every resident is affordability. And let me expand on that. On the one hand, the rates for our electricity and utilities is simply too high. Uh, the council for too long is the regular the council is the regulatory body over energy every rate increase goes through the council the council has never brought true scrutiny to what energy perceives as pass-throughs to ratepayers we pay seven million dollars to an out-of-state law firm to be the council's regulatory advisors that is more than psc pays their law firm for the entire state of louisiana we need to beef up the council utilities regulatory office and have people in-house, not an out-of-state law firm that has tremendous conflicts with other energy companies across the country. So that's one thing. If we control the cost of what the city charges and what energy charges and puts back on ratepayers' backs, that's a first step. The other issue is we need to make renewables more affordable. We had a tremendous opportunity with the $5 million energy fine for astroturfing to do uh -huh. something that would improve the world. We didn't. We spent it on crime cameras. Thank you so much, Mr. Morrell. Um, the second question that I have for you is, in the last three years, Entergy New Orleans LLC has changed its CEO three times, following the paid actor scandal and the Mardi Gras night blackout during freezing temperatures. After Hurricane Ida, the current CEO gave a speech to the city council that did not acknowledge the pain caused by the power failure, nor report any effort by the company to improve ele the electric grid. Instead, the CEO walked out of the city council meeting as residents expressed their views. And after being directed by the council to return to the meeting, 
goes off in city council chambers. If elected to serve on the city council, what action would you take to hold Entergy's management accountable? And I'm gonna post that first to Mr. Cutnow. Well, as, as we stated earlier, the council is in charge of regulating Entergy. We must demand the proper respect from them. And as a council person, we must also stop trying to entertain them and, and represent the people and make uh, and not the corporation. We have council members with, 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 with conflict of interest, uh, uh, and which is the reason why we are not doing a good job in demanding more from Entergy. We need a council person that's going to be there for the people and not there for the corporations that we are supposed to regulate. And that, that's what we must do. Demand that they support us and we must make sure that we uh, support the people in the city of New Orleans. Okay, and Mr. Everson. Thank you. Uh, I believe that holding Entergy accountable is absolutely the number one priority. Uh, it's been the number one priority for my campaign from day one. And uh, now after Hurricane Ida, it seems like it's risen up on everybody's uh, lists a little bit higher, which is which is good. That's important. Right now, uh, I think everything needs to be on the table regarding the restructuring and reforming of Entergy. Uh, everything from deprivatization, uh, municipalization, in other words, or a demonopolization, uh, or both, or uh, you know, even establishing an, uh, a new regulatory board that uh, would be structured a little bit differently, uh, because Entergy has has shown that it has the ability to kind of uh, affect what's known as regulatory capture, where they kind of boss the council around instead of the other way, the way that it's supposed to be. So um, this is a top priority. We have to demand that the city council uh, holds energy accountable. Time. Sorry. Thank you so much. Mr. Morrell. Thank you. I think that the people of New Orleans as ratepayers deserve more respect from energy than stockholders. There's no way the CEO of Energy New Orleans would have walked out of a stockholder meeting if the people out there were complaining about what was going on with the company. And the fact that she was comfortable walking out of a rate pair, I mean, the people who pay for this company to make its momentous profits is, is completely uncalled for. And the council should have taken a stronger stand and held her to task, not just that day, but with future hearings saying, this is not acceptable. Entergy is not our friend. Entergy is not our cohort. Entergy is a utility that we regulate. And that relationship has gotten muddled over the years and needs to return to a pure regulator and regulated uh, relationship. Uh, I saw a question, the question about my comment earlier about under siege. What I meant to finish that with, and I'll take my time to do it now, is what Bart said. We're under siege by a host of environmental factors that we have no control of. And we do lots of work like the levy protection so to mitigate environmental challenges but we if we don't fully embrace dealing with all of our environmental challenges living with water renewable resources we're not going to win that siege thank you so much mr morrell and sophie will go to the q a yes thank you um i'm going to combine two of these questions in the interest of time um what is your specific plan for reducing uh carbon methane and other greenhouse gas emissions from the city, as well as Entergy's unwillingness to divest in transmission while doing nothing to improve it. And we'll start with Mr. Cutnow. Uh, we must uh, first require that that, that we, we regulate every utility company in this city properly. We can no longer be friends with Entergy and we can no longer have this buddy-buddy relationship. We have to get serious about it, and we have to make sure that we protect the ratepayers of this city. Uh, the biggest problem we've been having right now that we are facing is the lack of support for the people from our council members. Uh, uh, I remember when the, when the young lady walked out, the, the CEO walked out of the council meeting, but before we started the meeting, the chairperson of the utility committee 
wants to recognize them and thank them for being such a good friend to to her relate in her relationship uh, and commend them. But but we cannot have that type of relationship. And secondly, uh, I lost the second um, question. Thank you so much, Mr. Cutnell. Mr. Everson. Thank you. Uh, yeah, there's a there's a lot in that question. Uh, so, um, it, but this is an opportunity actually to address something that I haven't heard talked about in any of these candidate forums uh, so far. And after Hurricane Ida, we saw we still have huge amounts of vegetative debris, tree branches and leaves and so forth, just in piles all around the city. And most all of that is going to our landfill. The where it will, by the way, emit uh, and contribute to the, the global warming that caused the rapid strengthening of Hurricane Ida in the first place. That's not what we should be doing with that kind of debris. We should, uh, and so this is why I support the idea of a more robust municipal composting program. We actually do have a composting program, a municipal composting program in New Orleans. A lot of people don't know about it. And it's very minuscule and that's, that's the problem. So instead of sending food scraps from restaurants uh, and, uh, yes, thank you. All right. So you ready, Sophie? Yes. Okay. Um, in regards to CO2 emissions, that's a very large question. And I, I'm the only council candidate in any race who has a comprehensive 12 page infrastructure plan. You could find at JP Morrell backslash platforms. But what I do want to talk about is transmission lines. Energy is a private company and they are profit driven, which many of you may not recall is eight years ago, a little over eight years ago, energy tried to get the larger compact to agree to sell our transmission lines to a third party, which was a hedge fund to manage our transmission lines. Had leadership on the council at the utility office at that time, not stood up with two other states, we would have been Texas earlier this year. Because once, as bad as energy is with transmission lines, at least they're an energy company. When you take essential utilities and give them to third parties that are purely profit-driven, that's when you see corners really get cut. Transmission lines are the lifeblood for whatever resources we use and need to be treated as such. And um, the public needs to pay more attention to that issue. Thank you. Thank you to all the candidates. Um, we now have one minute per candidate for closing remarks, and we'll go in opposite order, just, just like before. Um, and Ms. Normal, you can start. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, it's been a tremendous honor. The questions have been fantastic. I think that the future of New Orleans is tied to a couple of issues. Obviously, the our control of drainage and sewage and water board is an existential threat, but how we deal with living with water and living with renewable resources is certainly a large part of that. We need to reset the relationship with energy. The relationship has gotten way too cozy over the years, and there's so much crossover, whether it comes from energy performing political functions like doing polls to influence council races, whether it's the paid advisors who have no background in energy, or whether even the council on its own end, it spends money that we collect from energy fines and resources and spends on silly things like parades or crime cameras that don't work. We need, to, we need to beef up our Curo office. We need to take those resources and source by unbiased, unconflicted people. And we need to take control of regulating energy like we always should have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Mr. Everson. Uh, Hurricane Ida really must be our wake up call. A wake up call to recognize the threat of global warming and to take strong action against it. You know, a lot of people realize that this is an issue, uh, but largely people feel disempowered, like that there's nothing that they can do. Uh, well, there is something we can do, and that is we can demand change uh, at every level. And this requires that uh, the engagement of groups like Energy Future New Orleans to hold candidates and government accountable. So my request to all of you is after this election is over, to uh, no matter who wins the election, the next city government is going to have to confront the climate crisis as it deepens more than ever. So my request is that everybody on this call renew their commitment 
to hold government accountable for action, for climate action and climate justice. You can learn more about my specific proposals at uh, bardeverson.com. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Everson. And finally, Mr. Cottenham. We can't just keep building and planning the same way we have always been doing under the chairperson of the utility company today, on the city council today. We must uh, look at our, our responsibility to the people and make the investment to the people. We have the resources, we have the tools, and we deserve better. We deserve a council member with the experience and the qualification uh, that can get the job done and we deserve a council member who cares about the people and not the next election. We had an opportunity to look at the last Hurricane Laurie in, in uh, uh, St. Charles Parish uh, uh, and how the transmission and all of the energy lines and everything was destroyed. But we did not act upon that. We did not look at that and say, well, it's time for the city of New Orleans to look at the past, to look at what happened over in St. Charles Parish and to make sure that it don't happen to us in New Orleans. And it did, it was either. So we failed the people. We... I'll hand it off from Monique to Nichelle. Sure, I just wanna, um, while we, we have a little bit of time before we um, are scheduled to start the next, um, council race and the candidates uh, in, uh, for District C. Um, and there is a, a question in the chat about supporting the relocation, just and fully funded relocation of the uh, residents who unwittingly were led to uh, move into homes that were built on a toxic dump uh, by the city of New Orleans uh, and other governmental bodies. And the question is, what as at-large members would you do about that? Would you support a fully funded uh, and just relocation of residents who've been there for decades now? Uh, let's see, let's, we'll start with uh, in this order of Mr. Morrell, Mr. Cutno, and then Mr. Everson. About a minute each. Thank you. Thank you, it's a great question. One of the big challenges the city's had for years is that the city, like many municipalities and governmental agencies, when they get judgments or get into trouble, they know that they really don't have to pay and can't be made to pay. They can put people, whether you got run over by an RTA bus or tricked in a building into a dump, into a holding pattern pretty much forever. Uh, budgets are moral documents and they establish what is important to people who represent you. And there has to be a plan for Gordon Plaza. There has to be a plan, whether it's a phase relocation, whatever that process is going to be. And I, and I can tell you honestly, the residents of Gordon Plaza have not been dealt with honestly. They have not been engaged or treated fairly, and they have never been part of an actual conversation on what is going to happen. They basically been put off forever. And I can commit to you as a council member, I will be a leader in coming up with a solution that provides respite finally to the people that were tricked into living on that property. Thank you, Mr. Um... Uh, did I see Mr. Everson second? I've just lost my Cut, no. Mr. Cutting on then Mr. Everson. Thank you, Mr. Yeah. Uh, I forgot to mention that my background has always been in grant management and program development. My number one priority and day one, because it's a shame that we have denied those people for all oh, 20, 30 years, the opportunity to move from that uh, toxic waste I would take the 50, 40 to $50 million from the $388 million American Rescue Act plan that we, that the city of New York is sitting on right now and, and remove those people from that toxic weight, from that toxic uh, uh, site uh, when my first day in office. The first policy, public policy I would try to implement. As a council member, I guess I would I wouldn't have to try. I would demand that we take 50, 40 to $50 million and remove those people and, and help them to find a safe, affordable home somewhere else in the city of New Orleans and get them out of that toxic dump. That would be no, number one priority okay. on my list. Thank you, Mr. Cutting. Now, Mr. Everson? Yes, I absolutely uh, applaud what the other two candidates have said. And, you know, this is a, a very important issue. It's one of the earliest documented cases of environmental racism. 
And despite being uh, classified as a Superfund site, uh, despite winning a class action lawsuit, residents still have not been adequately compensated. There was, um, there was federal funding for relocation with HUD and others, but the city of New Orleans didn't do its part and residents are still struggling with diseases. Uh, it's a difficult issue because it has gone on for so long and uh, many New Orleans mayors have dropped the ball and because of the federal involvement, the city council has got to work closely with the residents uh, to come up with that plan. This, this issue is also very close to the issue of reparations since uh, the injustice was based on systemic and historic racism. You know, I support the formation of a task force in New Orleans to end structural racism, to achieve racial equity. Thank you. Uh, thank you, gentlemen, for uh, your time with the candidate forum. We're now going to shift gears to the candidates for District C. Um, and I just want to make sure where we are with uh, those candidates. I see Mr. Frank Perez. Welcome. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, do we have other candidates for District C coming in? If any of the people that are on the phone are these candidates, please put your name in the chat and let us know. Well, Mr. Perez, you are you are going to have all of the attention. <laughs> All of the focus of uh, the District C portion of the Energy Future New Orleans uh, Candidate Forum. So thank you, and again, uh, welcome uh, to the forum. Um, yeah, what we'd like you to do, if you can, and uh, is in a minute or so, can you just introduce yourself, introduce yourself, uh, why you're running for the race, who you are, a little bit about your background? Sure. Um... Uh, my name is Frank Perez. Um, I come from a, a varied background. I've done a lot of things and I wear a lot of hats. Um, I am a small business owner. I am the co-founder and president of a nonprofit organization. I'm also an educator. Uh, I'm also a writer. And I write, I've written several books on the history of New Orleans and I'm also a columnist for a couple of local publications. In addition to all that, I'm also a tour guide. Uh, so I do a lot of things, uh, but one thing that I'm really not is a politician. Uh, this is the first time I've ever run for office. Uh, never been that interested in it, really. Uh, and when I told my friends I was thinking about running in this race, they all looked at me and said, are you nuts? <laughs> and maybe I am. I don't know. I'll leave that for others to decide. But what I told them is what I'll tell you. I'm running because I'm frustrated and I'm flabbergasted at the inability of city government to deliver basic municipal services uh, and part of part of that includes regulating energy you know the, the new Orleans city council is so unique and has been given in my opinion an incredible gift to fight for environmental justice which is something i'm very passionate about and you know they do lip service and resolutions are fine but they really haven't exercised the full weight of their regulatory authority and so uh, that's another reason I'm running. I, I want to be introduced Perez, we're gonna, worst we're gonna, nightmare. We're going to close it there, and we're going to. I'm going to turn it over to Miss Nichelle Taylor, who's got okay. a few questions for you. So you can go into more detail with those questions. Sure. Okay. Sure. Okay, Mr. Perez, uh, what do you think is the biggest energy inter energy problem facing New Orleans residents, and how would you work to solve it if elected to serve on the city council? Well, there's a lot of problems. Uh, I think. The, the biggest problem is their business model, which is to generate their own power to maximize their profits instead of tapping into uh, the regional grids. You know, they were compelled by the federal government several years ago, I think in 2010 or 11, uh, to join um, uh, either um, uh, the, the SPP next door in Texas or MISO. And they eventually joined MISO, but they have done nothing but hinder and obstruct and block what they're supposed to be doing with, the, with, with tapping into the regional transmission grid. So I think that would be a priority for me. 
The second priority would be compelling them to move toward uh, more renewable and green uh, energy. You know, the, the RCPS sounds good, but is the city council willing to enforce it? I would love an opportunity um, to do that. Thank you. Uh, the second question is the ethics review board recommended that the city council adopt a new city ordinance to prohibit campaign contributions from Intergy and other companies regulated or contracted by the city, by the council. Would you support such a law and why? I would not only support it, I would be proud to author it. Uh, I'm the only candidate in my race that has publicly declared that I am not taking campaign contributions from energy, cops, landlords, charter schools, and other special interests. But it just makes no sense ethically to have the uh, for, to have the energy contribute money to politicians. I don't know why this hasn't been a law already. So I enthusiastically support that. I'd be proud to author that ordinance. Thank you, Sophie. Yes, um, we're going to take the same question from earlier regarding Gordon Plaza relocation. What is your policy around that? Oh, I'm sorry, could you repeat that? What is your policy around a fully funded relocation for Gordon Plaza? Um, I support that. Um, I, I, don't, I'm, I don't have all the details on that, so I would need to study it a little bit more in detail, but, uh, but I would generally be in favor of that. All right, next question. If elected, would you support intervener funding for our energy public advocates? Yes. That's, I don't need to take a lot of time with that. That's a quick yes. I, I can say that I think, uh, and it's kind of related, I do think that we need to uh, cancel the, the public utility advisor contracts, which are very lucrative and not in the best interest of the environment or our, our citizens and consumers. So I, I, we need to take a long, hard look at that and maybe find some independent experts to be utility advisors who understand the climate crisis. Thank you. If anybody else from the audience has any questions, please put them in the chat or in the Q&A now. I think. All right, I have one last question. What is your plan for reducing greenhouse gas emissions as well as targeting Entergy New Orleans's unwillingness to divest? Well, that's a simple answer. Use the full power of the council's regulatory power, okay? We've got to move towards green energy. That is the future. Entergy has fought that every step of the way. So, when we find them, we have to find them in such a way that it hurts their bottom line, right? A couple of years ago, when they paid all those actors to come in and act like they supported the power plant they built in the East, you know, they got fined $5 million. Well, $5 million is a drop in the bucket compared to $1.4 billion in profits, right? They don't care. They don't mind a $5 million fine. We've got to make fines hurt, but we've got to incentivize uh, green energy. That is the future. And I think with the infrastructure bill coming down and with what, what the Department of Interior did yesterday, I, I'm assuming you're aware of that, they've already started to identify tracks in the Gulf where they're going to do wind farms, uh, where they're going to put those leases up for sale. I, I think we've got to be ahead of the curve on this. We've got to take advantage of solar and wind and more renewable energy. There are thousands of jobs waiting to happen. They're going to happen. They might as well be here. Uh, it would also help replace a lot of the jobs that the oil and gas industry has lost. So renewable energy and heavy fines is, is the short answer. All right, actually, final additional question here. Um, cold temperatures are on the way. However, we have not gotten answers on what caused the Mardi Gras power outage. What do you think is needed to prevent unnecessary shutoffs? Well, I think we need to hold energy accountable. I think we need to call them uh, before the council and just grill them. 
and we need to find them, grill them. I support the uh, audits, the investigations. One thing we could do is file a complaint or follow up with the complaint that's been filed with the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission. I mean, we've got a lot of power that we're not using. And so I would say we need to take full advantage of our regulatory power in such a way that that has never been done before. And on that note, I, I just want to say this. I'm assuming that your members and, and audience watchers are familiar with the Public Service Commission. I just want to say that I would like to be to the city council what Foster Campbell is to the Public Service Commission, which is to say your best friend and energy's worst nightmare. And I'm proud to have Foster Campbell support in my campaign. Thank you. And I will take just one last question. Um, do you think Entergy needs to put new poles and electricity lines in all of New Orleans? And, and where? Throughout New Orleans. Well, they definitely need to upgrade their infrastructure. There's no doubt about that. Uh, so, yes, uh, I think what history has shown is that they wait for a storm like Ida uh, before they repair their infrastructure, and then they try to pass the cost on to consumers, which I'm totally against. Uh, I don't think we should pay for that. In fact, I will oppose, I can assure you that I will unequivocally oppose and fight against any proposed rate increases. If anything, I'd like to lower uh, people's uh, energy bills. I understand that according to the monopoly and the arrangement that the city and the state have with energy, they are guaranteed a reasonable profit. Well, $1.4 billion is more than reasonable. You know, they, they're a private shareholding company and they want to talk about free enterprise. Great. Sometimes with free enterprise, you take a risk. Sometimes you win. Sometimes you lose. So we, we need to get serious about enforcing that. Thank you. And we now have one minute for your final closing remarks. And then I will hand it back to Monique and John. Well, I guess I'll start by saying thank you for all the good hard work you do and keep it up. I, I've been uh, passionate about environmental justice and the climate crisis for a long time. I got rid of my car, what, 14, 15 years ago. I'm the only candidate that I'm aware of in any race that doesn't own a car. I rely pretty much on walking and public transportation. Uh, I think that we need to elect someone to the city council who is not only aware and believes in the climate crisis, but understands New Orleans' particular vulnerability in that climate crisis. And you also need to elect someone that understands just how bad of an actor energy has been for years, for years. And I am that candidate. I want to fight energy. I want to fight for a cleaner environment. I want to diversify our economy and cultivate a green energy industry. Uh, I would love the opportunity to do everything you want done. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely. Thank you, Mr. Perez. Thank you for taking the time uh, at the candidate forum. We appreciate uh, your time and your answers. Um, and if you haven't done so already, uh, please don't forget to fill out the, ca the candidate questionnaire. We will post your answers on our website so that um, uh, 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 voters in District C can see your answers and make their decisions for who they would like to elect on the city council. Thanks again happy, for your time. Happy to do that. Thank you. All right. Well, I see the room populating with candidates from District D. Welcome, welcome. Um, and I just want to check in with the uh, organizers of the of the forum to see if. Uh, we should be, uh, if we should take a pause for a moment as, uh, because others are expected to, to also come, other candidates from District D. Yeah, we could, um, we could take a, a, a couple minutes, uh, play a little music and, um, and just wait until the, the proper time. Let's see, we've got so far, um, Eugene Green, Mariah Moore, Shantrice Burnett, um, I believe uh, Morgan Clevenger is here as well. Um, we're still waiting for uh, Mr. Glover. 
uh, and Ms. Sams. So let's play a little bit of music and uh, come back to you guys in about two minutes. How's that sound? Sounds good. I think it makes sense for us to get back started again. Um, we've hit the 7-11 hour. Uh, Monique, if you would take it away. Sure. Um, so we're dreaming of a new District D candidate. Who's it going to be? Um, so I want to welcome Mr. Eugene Green. Um, we have uh, Ms. Chantrice Burnett, uh, Ms. Mariah Moore, um, and Morgan Clevenger is here with us. And I just want to make sure that I'm not leaving anyone out. It, it's this is our group for the candidate forum. Welcome each and every one of you to the Energy Future New Orleans Candidate Forum. And we would like to begin with asking you all to give a brief introduction for of yourselves of about a minute time. Um, so we're gonna start with Mariah Moore, followed by Eugene Green, then Chantress Burnett, and then Morgan Clevenger in that order. Well, thank you all so much for having me. My name is Mariah Moore. I'm running for New Orleans City Council District D. Uh, I am a candidate of change, of progress. I currently uh, work as the national organizer at a national nonprofit, as well as the nonprofit that I founded, which provides housing to uh, some of the most marginalized residents in our community. Um, you can count on me to bring bold, progressive ideas to the council. Uh, you've seen that I've already created resources without using state, federal, or uh, local government money. And, I can, and I, it is my plan to continue uh, to bring those solutions if elected. Uh, I'm number 60 on the ballot. Again, my name is Mariah Moore. Thank you so much for having me this evening. Hello, my name is Eugene Green, and I am pleased to be a candidate for the District E on the New Orleans City Council. I'm so honored to have an opportunity to run in the district in which I grew up. I grew up in the Punter Train Park and Sugar Hill communities. And after going away to attend school and work in Massachusetts, I came back. Just so happens that I live in the same district in which I grew up now on Gentilly, Gentilly Terrace on St. Rock, where I've raised my three children from birth to young adulthood. I'm a candidate for this office because I'm very concerned about our quality of life in the city of New Orleans, and I want to do the things that must be done to enhance that quality of life. I enjoy living in the city of New Orleans. My children enjoy living in the city of New Orleans, and it would be great if some of the issues that send us with challenges all the time were not quite the same, quite as large as they are. And I really am looking forward to an opportunity as a council member to get into the lead with regards to the regulation um, of density of time. Did somebody say time? Yeah. Yes, sir. Okay, I gotta set my clock. I appreciate this opportunity to be here. Thank you very much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Chantrice Burnett. I am number 53 on the ballot. And thank you all for having me this evening. I'm a lifelong resident here in New Orleans, Louisiana, as well as District D. I'm running for this seat because I believe we deserve to match our investment that will take the importance of having safe communities for our families, uh, economic opportunity to grow our uh, self-sustainability, as well as crime prevention measures that protect us all and keep us safe. So again, I'm Chantrice Burnett, number 53 on your ballot. Love to have you vote in this upcoming election. Thank you. I'm next. Perfect. Um, so uh, I'm Troy Glove. I want, first, I want to thank you all for taking the time to um, host this forum. I think this is such an important issue. Um, and I, I know Hurricane Ida um, made this feel more important, but um, this has always been such an important issue. My name is Troy Glover. Um, I am also a candidate for City Council District D. I'm a New Orleans native, graduated from the best high school in the city, which we all know to be McDonald 35. Um, I am currently the director for an organization called CEO. And what we do is we only hire folks returning home from incarceration. Um, we only hire folks coming home from incarceration and cut down blighted lots across the city. I think this, this issue 
around energy and um, affordable energy is super, super important. As someone who grew up uptown to a single mama after my dad got killed, we struggled often and we spent many nights um, either without power or having to make a tough decision between um, feeding myself and my, my two sisters uh, and paying for our light bill. So I appreciate this time and space and looking forward to the forum. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, next, Morgan Clevenger, are you able to join us? Hello. Thank you so much, Energy Future. I'm Morgan Clevenger, and I'm running for City Council District D, number 54, born and raised in New Orleans. I've been a champion for our people my whole life as a cultural advocate, a civic activist, and a neighborhood leader. And my work has always been on the ground with the people. Ms. Clevenger, I think your sound has gone out. I'm sorry. Something went wrong? If you could just rewind 10 seconds and start over. Okay, because it's saying. I think we're gonna have, we have some technical difficulties connecting with uh, Morgan Clevenger. So if she's able to jump back in, we'll, we'll definitely give her some time. I'm, I'm fine. Okay. Yes, it said retry, the host disconnected you. So as I was saying, you know, I've been boots on the ground for years. And um, one of the biggest issues that faces our people today and previously is the cost burdens that we all bear. Morgan, we lost your audio Till again. The cost because we're one sorry, of the most. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, we're we're having it's just we're, your audio is going in and out. But if you can, um, if you can continue, I think we can't. We have you again. Okay. Okay. Uh, thank you so much. We we need to lift the cost burden off the people and city as a regulatory body of energy has to this coming council has to make a change or we will, we're going down the wrong path. We need to reverse that course and do the things that we need to do to protect our residents and make sure. Okay. Did you get that? That, that, and protect residents and then it, it went out again. Could you just say your last hmm. sentence? You're almost there. <laughs> so sorry. Um, to protect our residents, to make sure all of our people can not only survive, but thrive. Thank you. Thanks for bearing with us with this technical audio problems. Okay, so next uh, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Dawn Abair, uh, who will pose uh, a couple of questions to each of you. You have a, a minute each to answer and Dawn, it's yours. Thank you so much. And thank you all the candidates for joining us tonight. I'm going to start with Ms. Burnett. What do you think is the biggest energy problem facing New Orleans residents? How would you work to solve if elected to serve on the city council? Ms. Burnett. Yes, so the, the biggest burden right now to the energy customers is the cost. Uh, right now the cost for energy is 30% higher than the national's average and the burden, uh, I'm sorry, it's a 30% higher cost burden on our residents, um, higher than the national average. Also, uh, when there are discrepancies in uh, light bills with residents in energy, there's not enough transparency or enough uh, guidance for customers to make those claims against energy and then work with those customers to figure out where is the, the mistake. Oftentimes that burden is placed on the customers to figure out why there's this sudden increase on their bills. And if the customer is inefficient or don't have the tools necessary to prove that, then they're stuck in force paying those high bills. And I believe that is the one of the major problems uh, against energy and against our customers, or I'm sorry, that energy is committing against our customers that as council, I would hold energy accounts um, accountable by making them responsible uh, for those uh, hikes instead of placing that burden on our customers. Thank you. Thank you so much. The next uh, question is going to Mr. Glover. 
what do you think is the biggest energy problem facing New Orleans residents? How, what would you do to help solve the problem if elected to serve on the city council? Yeah, I, I appreciate that question. I think we should really approach it from a holistic approach. So considering that um, majority of black families in the city make about $26,000 um, per year um, and are cost burdened by utilities, that's a big problem. I think energy spends way too much on power plants and not enough on transmission lines. I think they had a profit of about $1.4 billion in 2020. Um, and what people also don't know is that it's not up to the city council only up to the city council to regulate energy. It's also up to the Louisiana Public Service Commission. And I don't think either does a really good job at regulating energy so that the brunt of costs don't get down to um, rate payers. So I think no rate increases and in ensuring that we have um, accountability for energy. And so that that $1.4 billion that they profited can go toward the fixes instead of going to, towards residents. Thank you. Thank you very much. Candidate Green, what do you think is the biggest energy problem facing New Orleans residents? How would you work to solve if you are elected to serve on the city council? Certainly the biggest problem is that we'll pay a much higher percentage of the income here. Um, for energy bills. Um, I think that we would all say that. But I also think that a significant problem, so I'm gonna put them as a tie, if you will. There's also a significant problem is that we don't have a proactive effort to engage higher levels of use of renewable sources of energy. For example, I have solar panels, they work well, but I remember that you know, the tax credits, for example, were more generous than they were in the past. But of course, the way I would help to solve that is to look at what we're thinking that we're going to get out of energy, a private company that is profit driven, that generates billions of dollars of revenue and be realistic about it. And I, as a council member, will open up discussion as to whether or not some form, a combined form of municipalization, a combined form of competition gets us to where we want to be, which is to get the most efficient pro product for our citizens at the best cost. Thank you very much, Mr. Green. Candidate Clevenger, what do you think is the biggest energy problem facing New Orleans residents? How would you work to solve if elected to serve on the city council? The biggest problem facing our, our relationship with Entergy is that they are a for-profit company um, and they are driven by the bottom line for their shareholders. which results in I'm sorry no you're going which, in and which out. results in okay I'm not sure how to fix that um continue can you hear me now yes okay um but the relationship that Intergy has had with the city council for years um, has only resulted in more burden on the ratepayers and less service. Uh, the infrastructure has failed. The, um, the grid has not been renewed as it should. And renewable energy has, has not been a priority for energy. We need choice. We need competition. We need to break up the monopoly. And as your that council, and hopefully with all of our other council members to hold energy accountable and to look for new choices and better ways to serve our residents. Thank you very much. Candidate Moore, what do you think is the biggest energy problem facing New Orleans residents? How would you work to solve this problem if you were elected to the city council? Absolutely. Well, as mentioned previously, I think that uh, folks simply can't afford uh, the services that they're receiving. They can't afford the rates, especially our residents who are not making a living wage and are literally crumbling under financial burden and hardship. I don't think that energy uh, nor the city are providing enough 
uh, relief when it comes to bill and payment assistance. So we definitely need to look at that relief for our people and put our people first. I know that you know we would have uh, done much better if our lines were underground, and we need to look at you know how we move forward with grounding those lines. If the French Quarter's ground uh, lines can be grounded, then we need to move forward with that in other areas of the city. We need to also make sure that we are incentivizing uh, the building of new homes by installing solar panels, by in uh, installing solar battery packs, so that. Uh, when they do have these rolling outages that folks uh, continue to have the power that they need. Uh, so that's that, those are the biggest issues um, for me. And that's how I would move forward with that. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'm going to start with candidate Glover this time. District D is a recipient of federal investments in green infrastructure for flood protection to improve the climate resilience of Gentilly and other neighborhoods during storms. How would you leverage these resources to support the need for an energy system that reduces greenhouse gases and makes our neighborhoods more climate resilient? Yeah, that's a great question, especially in District D where we have um, hubs in our um, community, whether that's the Seven Wall, Punch Train Park, where I own my home, um, just really historic neighborhoods throughout the district. I think a couple of things that are already in place that, that we can grow. Energy has an energy smart program that's in place to put together weatherizations and support weatherizations on um, homes, whether that's around um, solar panels um, or understanding where heat, uh, heat islands are at. <clears throat> meaning that there are certain areas in the city that are three times hotter than others. Um, so ensuring that we prioritize those areas to get um, um, folks back up to speed. Um, um, then I think another part is, again, the, the, the piece around holding um, energy accountable. It, there was an emergency storm fund that was created um, and the city council did not hold energy accountable for when they got a chance to dip into that money. And that was supposed to be to um, to to really alleviate the burden for residents. And I think that's a great um, idea to have funds, but ensuring that um, we have control over that and not energy. Thank you. Okay, next we're going to candidate Clevenger. District D is a recipient of federal investments in green infrastructure for flood protection to improve the climate resilience of Gentilly and other neighborhoods during storms. How would you leverage these resources to support the need for an energy system that reduces greenhouse gases and makes our neighborhoods more climate resilient? That's a great question. We have um, the opportunity uh, with the, the 388 million um, recovery funds and with the current congressional infrastructure bill to create jobs around sustainable energy and reducing greenhouse emissions. But we also have to hold energy accountable to that process, um, supporting projects like the removal of concrete to reduce heat gain. But when you talk about power, we have to talk about renewals, renewables. And what we saw after Ida, I sat here with my neighbors in the dark for you know more than eight days. And what we saw was a tremendous um, loss because generators, gas powered generators became a survival tool. And yet to get that gas, um, people were resorting to violence. We can't have wow. that. And solar, Okay. is that time? Yes, yeah. it is, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you. Okay. okay, okay, candidate Moore, would you like me to repeat the question? Oh, no, thank you. You ready? Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. So uh, as previously mentioned, District D has heat islands. I think that one thing we need to remember is that uh, in the master plan, it said that we were going to be planting more trees uh, in which we currently are not. And so we need to be intentional about planting trees in the district 
that helps to reduce those heat islands. Another thing we need to be doing is working with community partners. So I'm very passionate about glass half full. And what they do is they, they go around and collect glass and they use it uh, and they recycle it. And they use it for coastal restoration purposes. They use it for sandbagging. They use it for building materials such as countertops and flooring. Uh, and so there's many ways in which we can make an investment into our community by partnering with our community partners. Another thing we need to be doing is laying permeable pavement. We can't continue to use blacktop pavement it, it creates more heat uh, and it just creates uh, those heat islands that we're talking about. Um, so just partnering with folks who have an investment in our um, communities like Glass Half Full, the Sunrise Movement and other uh, local community partners. Thank you very much. Candidate Burnett, would you like me to repeat the question? Candidate Burnett. We'll go to no, I'm sorry, I, I had oh, the phone. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm okay. Air. You want me to okay. repeat the question? Yes, please. Sure. District D is a recipient of federal investments in green infrastructure for flood protection to improve, I'm sorry, to improve the climate resilience of Gentilly and other neighborhoods during storms. How would you leverage these resources to support the need for an energy system? that reduces greenhouse gases and makes our neighborhoods more climate resilient? Yes. So what I would do is I would work with our uh, federal partners and uh, agencies that help us get that funding and continue to show how those these programs are vastly helping improve our quality of life in our, in our area. And then also by working with uh, my state reps and federal representation to gain more federal uh, access to funding that um, uh, would grow more projects like the Gentilly Resilience Project throughout our district, as well as incentivize homeowners and educate homeowners on ways that they can also become more uh, energy efficient throughout the communities by planting more trees and changing their concrete slab areas into more green uh, energy efficient spaces. Um, I think by incentivizing not only our local residents, but some of our small businesses to help their businesses change into a more energy efficient will also increase our community into a more uh, self-sustaining and green um, environment. Um, Thank you very much. Candidate Green. I'm pleased to announced that on Saturday morning, um, the commencement of the planting of 750 trees is gonna take place in the historic Pontchartrain Park community. Mm. It was my idea as I joined the Saving Our Urban Landscape, Sustaining Our Urban Landscape Board, that we would do this in Pontchartrain Park and use it as an example. It just so happens that it's in District D and for the record, it took two years. And for the record, the first trees were planted at candidate Troy Glover's house. We need to do more things like that because as we show successes and we show that the private sector is engaged in doing certain things, we'll be able to get more federal money, especially under the Biden administration, which has a very active um, environmental apparatus, if you will, because they want to address and, and understand that there are issues relative to climate change. I'd like to see us provide more incentives, get federal monies to provide some of those um, incentives to residents which is possible, more solar panels, for example, encourage the use of generators. Um, there are a lot of things that we can do and Gentilly is a great area in which to get started because the resilience district, um, resiliency district is an important part of what we ought to be doing for throughout the city. So we need to plant more trees. We need to use our successes and apply to the federal government for more resources to go along with the fact of the success of our resilience. Okay, time. Sophie, do we have any questions? More do we ever, yes. Okay. Uh, and uh, there's more specific questions to answer. Can't hear you. Repeat. Can you hear no. me? You could try again. Can you hear me? No, we can't. Yes. better. Oh okay. my goodness. Um, all right. Yes, we have multiple questions and um, I'm going to try and fit them all in in the next couple of minutes. Um, quickly, we'll get to this one. Um, 
New Orleans is one of the most energy burdened cities in America, with over 18,000 households giving over 20% of their monthly income to, en to energy. As the New Orleans City Council has the extraordinary and unique responsibility of regulating energy, how do you plan on addressing this pressing issue and making energy more equitable for our city? And we'll go in opposite order. So we'll start with Mr. Green. Important to recognize the awesome responsibility that we have. We have the ability to regulate and get much of what we desire um, out of energy if energy wants to go along with it. But I will pose this as a possibility. And unfortunately, I've seen major media, they're, they're opposed to it. But we expect a private company that has to generate a profit for its shareholders to invest in infrastructure and invest in improvements that take away from the bottom line. It may be time, and it's been a long time that we've been in this situation, if you will, it may be time to investigate a combination of municipalization, a combination of a public um, ownership of the monopoly distribution of energy services. It may be time to look at a better partnership and not just a regulation of a private firm to get done what we need to get done. Citizens should have incentives and support for getting solar panels, for getting generators for working to improve by changing the permeable pavement and the like. You, but we're not going to do it with a private fine. sector, profit run entity pulling a monopoly. Thank you very much. Um, I'm, I think, I believe the next person is Ms. Burnett. Yes. Um, so I believe we do this by one, um, uh, holding energy accountable through regular audits. Two, their, their contract with us is that they get a fair profit. And it's not a fair profit if 20, if uh, if our residents are paying a 20, uh, or, I'm sorry, if our residents is having a 20% cost burden on the energy that they're paying for. So as a, as a member of the council with regulatory authority, we have the power to look at those costs and say, this is no longer uh, acceptable for our customers to pay. And through audit and through numbers and fact finding, we have the power to lower those rates. So as council person, that is something that I would look to do uh, for the immediate effect of, of lowering that burden off of our uh, residents. Thank you. And I believe I've lost track. Who is next? We can go next. Thank you. Uh, sure. And then we'll have um, Ms. Moore and Ms. Clevenger. Yeah, this is, this is a quality of life issue, right? Um, if energy isn't done well, then also, energy also powers a lot of sewage and water board. And so the fact that we have horrible sewer system is in part because of energy. Yes, energy is a private entity, but that's why the city council is put in place to regulate and to hold them accountable. That's why the Louisiana Public Service Commission is put in place to hold energy accountable. And that means no more rate increases for residents. Um, that means not allowing energy to spend or approving energy to spend money on power plants like the $210 million power plant, plant that the city council approved. Uh, I, I think it's we have the authority to regulate and to hold energy accountable and to prevent a lot of the, the, the burden from getting to, to um, residents. We just don't invoke that power. And I think that's why it's important as the city charter calls to have a strong council. So the strong council holds energy accountable. Um, so I think that's a big piece of it. So I, I just want to call a thing a thing. So the council has failed to regulate energy because energy is one of uh, the, well, is the only Fortune 500 company in the city of New Orleans. And so the city council has not adequately regulated them because I, I feel that they are afraid that energy will leave the city of New Orleans. Well, it's time that we stand up and say, if you're going to leave, leave, because our residents come first and we cannot keep allowing profits over people. And so at the end of the day, either you're going to lower the rates and you're going to make it more equitable for our, for our residents who don't even make a living wage, who are still paying the same amount as folks who make a living wage and higher. We have to, we have to do it. Our folks are literally moving away because of this because they cannot, uh, because their public goods and services don't truly serve them. Uh, they're paying for something that is failing. Um, yeah, so that's, I'm fed up too. 
Ms. Clavenger? Yes. Um, could you repeat the question? I'm sorry. Yes. New Orleans is one of the most- Could you converted. repeat the question? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. I can hear you. New Orleans is one of the most energy burdened cities in America with over 18,000 households giving over 20% of their monthly income to, income to energy. As the New Orleans City Council has the extraordinary and unique responsibility of regulating energy, how do you plan on addressing this pressing issue and making energy more equitable for our city? Thank you. First, we need to um, make sure that Council members as a regulatory body are not receiving contributions from Entergy. I have publicly stated that when I started my campaign. And second, we need to review these public utility advisor contracts with out-of-state uh, law firms because they have not been serving us well and we spend taxpayer money on that. Third, we need choice. Entergy touts the fact that there are only Fortune 500 company but that should not be used as leverage against us. So what? If you're making your, your profit off the backs of the people in a way that kills their opportunity to thrive, then you've failed the people. So we need a stronger city council. We need to cancel or review the, the public utility advisor's role. We need to look at creating an independent regulatory body. And we need to look at choice, competition competition. Thank you. Um, we, in the interest of time, I'm going to allow each candidate roughly 30 seconds to answer this following question. Um, I do think it, it absolutely needs to be addressed and many people in the audience have been asking for it. So first off, um, who will actively support a fully funded relocation for the residents of Gordon Plaza? which is a pervasive environmental issue in an area that continues to have power outages regularly, even during non-hurricane season. And just to let everyone know, the demands include, and are listed in the chat, a buyout for each property owner demanding a fully funded relocation at the replacement cost had our homes not been built on toxic soil by the city of New Orleans. Uh, the buyout must include moving expenses, and it must also occur before or prior to any future project or construction begins to ensure the safety, health, and dignity of human beings uh, especially during the COVID-19 crisis. So we'll go in reverse order again. Um, we'll start with Ms. Clevenger and please, I'm so sorry, but only 30 seconds. I fully support the funding of the full funding for the relocation of Gordon Plaza residents. I've met with many of the residents and their, their activist group, and they have been suffering for many, many years. The health impact, the toxic is absolutely horrendous. I absolutely and fully support a fully funded relocation of Gordon Plaza residents. Thank you. Ms. Moore, then I think, I believe it would be um, Mr. Glover, Ms. Burnett, and then Ms. Mr. Green. Yeah, this is a, um, a policy area that I supported uh, before even qualifying for office, I believe that uh, folks should have safe, stable, clean housing. Uh, I believe that those folks deserve a fully funded relocation and also to be paid for what would have been the property value had this land not been toxic. Uh, so I fully agree with that. And I think that we can work with the Biden administration to get them those funds because that is an environment that is an environmentally racist uh, area uh, and it was done intentionally. Uh, and so I believe that we can get that done. I, I also, I'm also in full support and my organization cuts a bunch of the blighted lots surrounding an area uh, because that's just at least one way to, um, to, to help. And if, this, if the Garden Plaza residence was on St. Charles or in Lakeview, this would have been happened. Um, and we've had an administration after administration promise to 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 re relocate folks. But that's why it's important to have a strong council and folks that actually stand up and make tough decisions on the council. So I'm in full support and have always been in full support. I also uh, fully support the full funding of the families Gordon Plaza and all of the require um, extra um, necessary things that they need to relocate. I will work with our state and federal partners to make sure that it happened, as well as the mayor. 
I do believe this is something that needs to happen as soon as possible within six months of taking office because in 2021, those families should not still be there and they should not still be dealing with the burden of being in Gordon Plaza. So I fully support the families and their relocation. Am I next, Eugene Green? Yes. Okay, <laughs> I didn't know it's, I had missed one. I fully support um, the fully funded buyout of Gordon Plaza, it's 65 homes. And um, there are many ways to look at including a potential bond issue, but also we are in a unique position with a former Congressman who works in the West Wing of the White House president who has stated his intention to address issues of environmental racism, a congressman who ran with the support, a congressman who's now in the West Wing. I believe that we can get the funds. We have a moral obligation to get those funds. I fully support mm -hmm. by a fully funded by. Thank you. And I'm so sorry, we are over time. So I'm going to kick it back to, uh, I'm going to kick, kick it to Kenitra to make a final decision on closing statements. Okay, Sophie, this is Dawn. So I'll, I'll take it from here. Okay, so candidate Burnett, uh, in one minute, can you uh, give us your closing statement? Yes, thank you again, uh, Alliance for Affordable Energy for having this forum and giving me the opportunity to speak with you all this evening. I am Chantrice Burnett, number 53 on the ballot. I am asking for your vote in this upcoming election because I have lived the last 32 years of my life in poor conditions and we can no longer continue to live this way. I know that I have what it takes to bring us economic equity, uh, affordable energy, as well as just self-sustainability. So again, I'm Chantrice Burnett, number 53 on the ballot, asking for your vote to do just that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Candidate Glover. Yes, I, thank you again for creating this space to host this forum. My name is Troy Glover, I'm number 56 on the ballot. I think this election cycle is super, super important. Um, I mean, from issues like not getting the trash picked up um, to energy in a city where nearly 60% of black residents rent, where under 50% of black males have access to affordable um, employment, access to employment. And we have over 14,000 young people not connected to work in school. Um, how do we tell a young person growing up in this city that um, they can be all they can be um, when uh, parents can't afford, where parents have to make the choice between um, paying energy or feeding their kids. And that's something that the city council have direct control over. In my work as the director of CEO last year during the pandemic, I created the return and citizen stimulus. Well, I gave over one point, my organization gave over $1.8 million to folks returning home from incarceration, $2,000 each. That's putting resources directly into the hands of people in a way that the city council have access to do. I appreciate this time today. Troy Glover, number 56 on the ballot. Thank you. Thank you very much. Candidate Moore. Thank you all so much for having me. Uh, my name is Mariah Moore again. Um, I have faced many of the issues that we're talking about. The affordable housing crisis. I faced uh, homelessness before. I faced uh, what it's like not to be able to find affordable housing. I faced violence, right? Uh, in he here in the city of New Orleans. So I know what it's like to face that and be terrified, right? But I also know what it's like to want to create resources to make people safer. And I've done that. So I'm a renter and, uh, I, and my, I will continue to be a renter while I continue to purchase homes for community members that cannot and simply do not have the resources to take care of themselves. I believe in a housing first model. I believe that our youth should have the resources that they need to become all that they can be. Um, I don't wanna take up all my time, but I'm number 60 on the ballot. My website is mariahmoorefanola.com. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. And I just wanna say one thing, I met the owners of Glass Half Full and they are doing a lot of uh, really innovative things. Candidate Green, can we have your closing statement? Yes, I'm pleased to have this opportunity to speak to us tonight and to share my ideas. Thank you, Alliance, for giving us this opportunity. I invite everyone to come out on Saturday at 9.30 at Bethany United Methodist Church, where 
sustaining our urban our urban landscape. We'll begin the planting of 700 trees in Pontchartrain Train Park. I hope that it will result in 20,000 trees planted throughout the city. It was my idea to get this started in our historic community. I know that I just took 30 seconds of my closing to say that, but everyone is welcome to come out and plant trees. I'm pleased to have an opportunity to be, to be a candidate for the city council in the area in which I grew up, in the area in which I raised my children. I've been very active in our city. And I'm looking forward to the opportunity to continue service to our citizens as a member of the city council. Energy is a very important consideration. And one thing that I can promise you is that I'm going to look at, no matter how long we've been in the situation right now, alternatives. When I was in Houston, I had a chance to do from one of three providers, Lion, Georgia Southern, or Energy. And okay. they were competitive with each other. Okay. And boy, one minute goes by pretty fast. Thank, Thank you for you. this opportunity. And I look forward to working with everyone I'll Thank be on the city council. Thank you very Thank much. You. Candidate Clevenger. Thank you so much, Energy Future and Alliance. Um, this is such a major issue for our city right now. You know, I have been, again, working boots on the ground with people for 40 years. We can't hear you. People champion our people. We have an opportunity now to have a council that can really change the way we're moving because we're at a pivotal moment in our city and we do need to lift the burden off our people. And moving toward renewable, sustainable energy is, is a number one priority and we have to hold energy accountable. And if they're not willing to do it, we need to move forward. And the city council has to take a stand. And I'll take that stand because that's what I've done my whole life. So much, I'm Morgan Clevenger, number 54. We appreciate your vote. Thank you all for participating in our forum. Good luck. Thank you, Alliance. Thank you. Monique? Wow, well, thank you, District D candidates. We're now going to turn it over. We're running just a little bit behind time, but. I want to thank the uh, Vanessa Geringer and Oliver Thomas, the candidates for District D on the City Council, uh, for uh, uh, arriving on time and uh, being patient. Uh, we're looking forward to getting uh, to getting to hear from you in tonight's forum. You are the last slot of candidates, so you know bring all that energy, all that passion, all that planning and commitment. We want to hear it all from you uh, as uh, as we end the forum tonight. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is ask you all, ask the, both of you to introduce yourselves uh, for about a minute, uh, let people know who you are, uh, what you're about, and then we're going to turn it over to Ms. Dawn Bear, who will ask two questions, and then Sophie Zakin will um, moderate questions that come in from the audience and bring those to you. And then we'll have your closing remarks at, following all of that. So, uh, Vanessa, you will, we'll start with you, and then we'll hear from Oliver in about a one-minute introduction of yourself. Okay. Well, God. technology. Uh, good evening, uh, Alliance for Affordable Energy. I am Vanessa Garinger Johnson. I'm number 68 on the ballot. I'm a lifelong resident of Lower 9 and of District E. Uh, I have been actively involved as a community leader for 16 years fighting around all kinds of issues that we are still unfortunately suffering since Hurricane Katrina. Um, I bring energy, passion, um, networking. I work with uh, elected officials around victories that came about as a result of uniting our community and fighting for these very things that we, we needed. Unfortunately, we're uh, as a regulator of energy for far too long, our council has not been about respecting the voices of the community. Mm -hmm. Time. Okay. Thank you. Candidate Thomas. We'll hear from Oliver about a one minute introduction. 
uh, Oliver Thomas, number 72. And I alerted the panel panel that I had an eight o'clock event uh, that I have to go to. So I just called him and told him that hopefully I'll be a little uh, late. Uh, looking forward to this conversation, whether it's from trash pickup uh, to how we use our, our land, our topography, to how we begin to deal with, with energy. Uh, the one thing we do know, we're living in the 21st century uh, with 20, 20th century reliability and production uh, from our energy uh, provider. Uh, fortunate enough to have the experience, uh, uh, the Landrieu administration, when we had the National Resili Resiliency Conference, they asked me to moderate and facilitate uh, that uh, conference. I understand a little bit about the company and its operations from my time on the city council. And as a student of uh, what we're doing with green infrastructure around the world, uh, how folk are, are living with reliable, renewable, uh, and affordable energy, uh, I'm ready to have the discussion about all those issues, about mm -hmm. how we make our city uh, a better place as it relates to uh, utilities that fire us up. Thank you. Okay. All right. Well, uh, I want to thank you two for joining us tonight. We really appreciate it. I'm going to start with uh, candidate Geringer. What do you think is the biggest energy uh, problem facing New Orleans residents? How would you work to solve it if elected to serve on the city council? Well, the biggest uh, issue is the high rates that our residents are having to deal with. So the, one of the things that we need to look at, of course, is holding energy accountable. And how we do that is heavier fines, more investment in the energy smart program, weatherization, permeable sidewalks, um, trees, planting trees in our neighborhoods, and working with community partners that have been doing the work around green energy and green infrastructure. I had WaterWise do a project here at my home. And because Energy and Sewage and Water Board are intimately connected, we need to definitely be, able to be about the business of making sure that Energy, who is a for-profit for company, makes the investment in, it, in its rate payers. Thank you very much. Candidate Thomas. What do you think is the biggest energy problem facing New Orleans residents? How would you work to solve it if elected to serve on the city council? I mean, the biggest problem is uh, reliability, dependability, uh, and affordability. Uh, uh, we, we had 12 blackouts uh, about a year or so ago in one period where we know that wasn't dependable or reliable. Uh, when you talk about affordability, the franchise agree agreement uh, with the regulators allows them to earn at a certain level. So how do we mitigate that level of earning where if we're gonna deal with energy, the company makes money, but a percentage of that, especially during COVID and, and post Ida, a percentage of that goes back to mitigate any increases for the residents here. Uh, th there's several opportunities. I mean, we live in a time right now, if we're gonna be progressive, uh, the $110 billion uh, for the wind uh, effort that the Biden administration is taking a look at the $55 million in potential uh, tax credits uh, uh, for solar, anthropocenic uh, uh, and green hydrogen models. Uh, we have a lot of tools at our disposal if you understand this industry to work moving forward. Thank you very much. All right, we have our second question. I'll uh, start with you, candidate Thomas. District E has more rooftop solar than any other council district as a result of residents choosing renewable solar energy after Hurricane Katrina. District E residents comprise the majority of residents urging the council to consider alternatives to the energy gas plant. Some were shut out of a meeting in which a majority of council members voted for the gas plant that pollutes New Orleans East neighborhoods and did not work in Hurricane Ida as Entergy claimed it would. If elected to serve, how would you ensure that the people of District E are respected and heard by the city council? Well, what, one of the things I think is uh, making sure that the citizens in the region know that when you talk about natural topography, uh, whether it's the waterways, uh, the wind that blows across by Savage, or the natural, largest national wildlife preserve, 
we actually offer the, an opportunity to move forward with 21st entry uh, energy just because of where uh, where we live. Uh, the power plant, we had council members that actually went uh, on the radio after the storm and said, well, maybe they can celebrate now because certain sections of our community had energy. Well, they didn't even know that the power station wasn't working. They didn't even know that, that the areas that, that had energy are powered by substations. And most of those uh, uh, utilities are actually underlying. So one of the things we'll be doing is make, educating the council and understanding what the energy provides, where it provides, and, and how we mitigate any cost or loss to our citizens, but, but also using 21st century models and using the models around the world to even maybe help um, the, the company in spite of itself to transition. Thank you, thank you very much. Candidate Geringer. Uh, can you repeat the question? Yes, I will. And if you look in the chat box, um, it's in there also. Okay. District E has more rooftop solar than any other council district as a result of residents choosing renewable solar energy after Hurricane Katrina. District E residents comprise the majority of residents urging the council to consider alternatives to the energy gas plant. Some were shut out of a meeting in which a majority of council members voted for the gas plant that pollutes New Orleans East neighborhoods and did not work in Hurricane Ida as energy claimed it would. If elected to serve, how would you ensure that the people of District E are respected and heard by the city council? Well, that is something I've been doing for 16 years. I've lent uh, my voice of activism to all of these issues that we are experiencing. And the fact that we have a lot of solar um, energy efficiency homes in District E lends to the fact that we, the, the council, energy sold the council a bill of go goods in us um, being charged for a plant that did not work after this hurricane. We all thought a switch was going to be flicked and power was going to happen. It didn't. So energy has to be held accountable. Uh, profits over people is never what we should be about. Um, the council, the mayor, our federal partners, our state partners, everyone should be at the table involved in a holistic approach to, to actually having mm -hmm. energy be about the business of its ratepayers. Very much. Sophie, do we have any questions from the audience? Yes, I am so sorry for going over time, um, but we really appreciate you still being here. Um, final question we have is currently there are a lot. There's a lot of conversation surrounding the idea of revitalizing areas of New Orleans East, such as Lincoln Beach and the Old Six Flags site. How will you utilize projects like these that take place in predominantly BIPOC areas as an opportunity to create immediate and sustainable benefits for those communities? I'll start with uh, Mr. Thomas and then Ms. Johnson. Well, I, I think it's a perfect opportunity if we're going to get the foundation money to start Lincoln Beach. And we see now that there's an effort uh, with the uh, Breeze Project and hopefully the realization of Six Flags that they could be the example. Uh, what we want to do with sustainability, green infrastructure, resiliency, uh, and al alternate uh, utility sources. Uh, look, we have a major opportunity on our table. This discussion is fine, but we are actually in a, in a great position, uh, as bad as it was, given the Biden initiative, uh, the $110 billion on the table, uh, the, 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 effort, the fact that they want to cut 80% uh, to have clean energy by, by 2030, the zero net emissions by 2050, then if we position ourselves to work with agencies like the Alliance for Affordable Energy, independent communities, we can uh, uh, position New Orleans East as, I would say, let's remake New Orleans East and the Lower Ninth one into a sustainable community, especially when you talk about new development. So, and, and begin to access that money uh, to create a, a, a greater environment, a greater grid, where we're dependent on a natural and more reliant energy services that take us into the 21st century and, and protect uh, protect the planet. So. Uh, we're in a good position. I think just, we just have to be all on the same page. Um, Sophie, any other questions? Um, I'm just seeing uh, a message in the chat from a Zoom user who's 
claiming to be John Bagneris, um, saying that he's been here the whole time. Mr. Bagneris, if you if that is you, uh, we cannot identify you unless you have yourself named with your name. So I'm, but that is the only question from the audience if you wanted to go to closing statements. Okay. Okay, everyone, you have one minute for closing statement. We'll start with Mr. Thomas. Uh, well, the Biden initiative uh, uh, for when uh, the 55 billion available in terms of tax credits uh, uh, for solar, uh, anthropocenic and green hydrogen models uh, that we could use moving into the future uh, because we've been through a lot here, uh, because we will probably continue to be go through weather events and wind events. I think we're perfectly positioned to be the country's example of what a new 21st century sustainable community looks like. And we can use energy and their unreliability. Uh, we can use some many of the mistakes that government has made to, I think, to appeal to the federal government and investors uh, all over the world to get us that type of seed money uh, and that money where we can create the type of livable environment. Look, it's really not complicated. I wrote a piece for Earth Day years ago, and one of the lines said, when people try to understand our planet, is that Earth sustains life. No Earth, no life. So there has to be an initiative. There has to be an effort to do everything we can to mm. create the type of environment where our children and grandchildren can still be here. Thank y'all. Candidate Geringer. Look, we have an absolute excellent opportunity with Lincoln Beach and uh, the Six Flags site to be the model for other cities in implementing green infrastructure jobs at that site, as well as energy efficient avenues that would, um, would um, propel that site. So we have an excellent opportunity. We just need the right council person that is truly going to be the voice of the people that is not going to shy away for speak, from speaking truth to power around what has been going on here that, have, that has affected us in District E so negatively for 16 years. So as a strong community activist person, a council person who, uh, who has worked, background has worked with uh, federal, state, and local officials, we can make a real, um, uh, it could be a real win-win for our council. Thank you very much, candidates, for- uh, Thank you all very much. Thank attending you. Attending the forum. Thank you. Thank you, blessing. Thank you. Um, Monique? Yes, I just want to remind all the candidates that we have questionnaires. We're hoping you guys can answer. The deadline is tomorrow. Um, that way we can post your answers on the Energy Future New Orleans website at F no efno.org and um voters in new orleans can be able to see your answers as uh, as they think about who to make who to elect to the city council so please get your answers in to the candidate questionnaire from fno by tomorrow so that we will post them uh and uh, share, share your answers with uh with uh, voters across the city um i'm going to turn it over to robert for closing remarks Unmike, Robert. Thank you, Monique. I invite all of you participants and candidates who stepped forward tonight to participate in discussing the future of energy in New Orleans to feel the pride and blessing of being here. You've presented yourselves as actively engaged for the common good of our city. We've seen during the last few years how easily authoritarian personalities can take over our institutions, but you are the people who will preserve our institutions. We see all of us here as potential council members, but I thank especially those of you who have had the courage and the clarity actually to run for the office. Whoever is elected, I hope you will remain all active in whatever role life brings you. We may all stay current 
about our energy issues in New Orleans on the website of Energy Futures New Orleans, and I put the URL in the chat. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, everybody.